Good afternoon, and welcome to episode 628. <laughs> it's getting long saying it's like it. Episode 628, that sounds a bit more concise. And the topic today is you don't listen, and how you can listen better. Um, I was originally going to call it uh, how, um, how well do you listen, I thought, no, let me be blunt. You don't listen, here's how you can listen better. Before I jump into that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and uh, what I'm about, and I'll explain what I mean so you don't take a much, too much offense. <laughs> My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help women create and find balance in love, life, and business, and also empower their feminine spirit so they can live life in a more fulfilled way. And hey, PJ, and I see my broadcast again. Um, and I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine, and I do a lot of work with the masculine and feminine in my work and in my life. Funny, there's been a conversation going on today about masculine embodiment versus that masculine value masculine lip service very different things anyway that's for another time so I do these talks every day and because i've been inspired by the feminine by the feminine they call these talks are called messages from messages from the masculine inspiring your feminine heart and today's episode 628 continues the theme this one's for everybody again i do a lot of these talks that are actually for men and women um, which is basically to be blunt you don't listen and how you can listen better so let me lay some things on the table first to give you a framing from which we can start. First of all, if you're like me, because I've done this myself, so let me just be clear, I've been guilty of this myself. Um, I'm better at it now, though, because I've, I've been learning this lesson over and over again. So if you haven't learned this lesson, this is maybe what you're still doing. Um, when you're in conversation with somebody, and it's not necessarily a romantic relationship, it's any conversation. It could even be with um, a creditor or a sales opportunity or a co-worker or a social engagement or anybody it's not just relationship centric so this conversation this this theme this lesson can be used anywhere so you're in conversation with somebody whoever the person is how many times have you been in a conversation with them where before they've even finished what they're saying you're already preparing your response you don't have to raise your hands i know that a lot of you do i know i've done it myself and maybe you personally haven't done that maybe somebody you know who does that or maybe you've been listened to by somebody who does that to you because it can work both ways. So my first tip, one of the biggest lessons I actually learned was when I'm in conversation with somebody and they're talking, I do my best to shut up and listen. And I mean shut up in here, not just out there. Because it's not like I'm interrupting them, but when I'm thinking what I want to say in response to them, I'm interrupting what they're saying in here. So out of respect, which I'm getting better, again, practicing, 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 I'm learning how to listen in here as well as outside so that I can actually take in completely what they're saying before I think about what to respond. This is a sign of deep respect and a sign of vulnerability to be that willing to listen all the way through because a lot of us are wired up where we need to sound smart and we need to make sure there's no gaps in the conversation. So when somebody finishes talking, we're gonna be right there ready to jump in because otherwise we might be looked upon as being somebody um, who's not very smart or very on it or maybe they may think we're not even listening when actually the inverse is true, when we are fully listening to that person, there will be a pause from one the end of what they said to what we say in response because we now have to think of a response as we listen to all of what they've said. So, in fact, it's a sign of greater wisdom and presence to actually listen all the way through to what they're saying and then to sit with what they said before we respond. It's kind of like not... <laughs> <laughs> Interesting analogy just popped in my head. It's kind of like not, not speaking with your mouth full. There are so <laughs> this is how I, I had to go through this. My parents were very adamant about this one. It's like, you know, finish eating before you speak. But it's kind of the same idea, is that we have this tendency to spit out what we're thinking before we've even finished listening to what they're saying and before they've even finished saying what they're saying in the first place. So that analogy got stuck in my head. So maybe this is now stuck in yours as well. But this is the thing is that we do tend to be rude in our conversations, even without intending to, because we've been trained by the culture that we need to be sharp and responsive and on the moment, where we're saying things to somebody else in response to what they said and miss the last two senses of what they were saying to us because we weren't listening. We were formulating our response in here. Now, some people I know believe <laughs> that they're listening so, because their, their listening skills are so good, they can actually listen and talk at the same time. Maybe they can. Maybe they can't. But I believe for 99% of us, it behooves all of us to be willing to listen all the way through to the end of what they're saying. And maybe to check in and see if there's anything else they want to say, let's say, is that everything? 
because then they can respond. Now in relationships, this is especially powerful in romantic relationships because so many people, partners in relationship, do not listen fully. So many people in relationship are absolutely attached to their position. So whatever it is you're saying to them, they have the response already locked and loaded, ready to blast at you before you even finish what you're saying. They're already defending themselves and attacking and reacting. Those sort of people, if they won't learn to choose differently, are people you probably want to avoid. This is a relationship break for this is actually a relationship deal breaker for some people because it's so clear that the person they're with isn't listening to that. So that's one piece, and that's a big piece I know. Another layer I want to play with is the listening inside. Um, I did a talk a little bit earlier in another group that I'm part of and shared this cliff note version, but I'm going to give you more depth in this one, is the listening to ourselves because we also oftentimes are unwilling to listen inside, meaning that when we get inner guidance, when that hunch shows up, that, um, what's what I'm looking for? That little feeling of intuition that shows up, whether it's that still small voice or a gut feeling or your heart speaks or a little disturbance in your stomach or you're just feeling like you need to do something but you don't act on it, that's failing to listen to the voice inside and that's not listening either. So as much as it's important to listen outside fully to what's happening coming in and respect those outside of you, when you listen to that voice inside, you listen to the inside guidance because you all, we all have it. That's a sign of respect for yourself. However, I should say this clearly, many, many, many people, maybe not you, but many people I know, and I've been guilty of it too at times, still am working on this, have ignored or suppressed or denied the wisdom from the voice inside. And that's, not a, that's a lack of self-respect. So I'm working on that now as a conscious effort. I'm saying it out here to out myself so that way I'll hold myself accountable. And maybe you hold yourself accountable too. So respecting yourself enough to listen to the voice inside. And I'm talking about the voice that comes from below the neck, not the one up here, but the one in your heart, this guidance that comes from deep within that is more aligned to the truth that may not be the one you like to hear, but it's the one that's most accurate and will bear itself out in the conversation. If you use that um, resource fully and express that, that resource fully, you'll become so tuned in to your truth, so tuned in to your authority that people respect you a whole lot more. So those are two big keys out and in that will help you be respected more, be more respectful and be more receptive to those who speak to you as well. So that's two. I want to play with one more because there's one, one more that I've been working on myself, which is kind of a second part from what the voice inside, which is this. For those of you who meditate, this is one of those things where meditation is actually a connection to that voice inside. I'm a firm believer that the more we open the space inside, the more we clear open the presumptions and tapes we run up here, the more we're open to listen to that tuned up, tuned in and aligned voice inside. And listening to that voice inside, when you're meditating especially, is a powerful and a um, humbling, that's a good word for it, experience. By listening to that voice inside, and this is the thing I've been learning a lot in my own meditation practice, because when I forget or I don't listen, because a lot of people meditation, and when I started, I was doing it this way myself, was to simply to either chant a mantra or to focus on something, and to be so laser focused on that one thing, time goes by and you go, great, I've meditated. But I believe that meditation is a time to listen. The meditation is a time to listen inside to that truly powerful, still, small voice. Because for most of us, for most people I know, have it man if they don't meditate, this is an opportunity. And if they do meditate, a lot of times, it's so self-contained, it doesn't open them up to receive what could be powerful insights. And yes, I'm getting spiritual on you. It is part of my life, so why not share it when I'm doing a public forum like this? But really, listen to that still voice inside, to listen to that guidance that comes through, comes in, how you want to say it. I mean, I don't talk about it, I don't say about it being above. That's a bit too traditional religious. I'm talking about the inner tuning of connecting to our soul, our spirit, the God that lives within. 
And again, this is the way I term it. So you may not have the same alignment. I understand that. I'm letting you know a way of thinking about this. Is when you tune in and <laughs> tune in, turn on. When you tune in and turn on the listening to that voice, the guidance that comes through could change your life. It has changed mine on more than one occasion. So my encouragement to you, my invitation to you, is to practice listening more fully, more effort, more um, effectively, which means basically opening up to receive that which comes from over there and the other person, but also that comes from up within, both in from the inside, intuition from inside, and that comes through from that deeper place inside, which is spirit, God, whatever you want to call it. Those three places, if you put an openness, or you, sorry, if you focus your openness to listen and receive in those three places, your life, your communication, your relationships, your career will transform dramatically. So my invitation to you is take this on because when you do this, you'll be benefiting mag magnificently and um, what's the word I was looking for? It went, it will come back. <laughs> Your life will transform magnificently and also, oh, effortlessly, that was worth looking for. So it's simply a place of being receptive. The power of listening, the power of the voice, I mean, in my coaching with my clients, I am listening to a lot more than just the voice they're saying. Oh, well, let, me, uh, let me throw this one on the table, yes. I knew there was something else sitting out there. This will also apply to your um, communication by, by technology. If you write emails or text, this is going to really be um, a wake-up call. Listening is something that we do when we're in conversation with somebody. And as I mentioned in the beginning, we listen to people's voices, but also we sometimes cut them off because we're looking forward to looking to respond as well. So that limits what we hear right there. Let me just make it even more challenging for you. There's studies out there, and they talk about this all over the place, where our verbal communication is only 7% of what we communicate. Seven, that's uh, seven, <laughs> the wrong number, fingers up. 7% of our communication is our verbal communication. Now, that's the best we can get when we write it. So whether you're texting, which is even worse because it it's, con it's contracted, but even an email, you can only r communicate so much. So 7% of what you communicate is through written form, verbal form, because a lot of it from beyond that, I don't know percentage exactly, studies online you can research on this but you can actually listen you can be aware that when you're communicating so when you so imagine this you're listening to somebody else if you're not able to get their tone as in what they sound like the volume the speed the tempo um the timber all these different containment contents of the voice if you don't have those pieces you can't get full information add to that facial expression body language movement these are all components of communication that when you're talking to somebody over the phone or you're reading someone's text, you don't get. So listening becomes even harder. So when I'm working with my clients, I'm working with them by phone, but I already have to take, I really have to open up a space. And this is a skill that you can learn, by the way, is open up a space to listen to much more than just the voice because I know that all, what I'm hearing is just 7%, actually more than that because I'm hearing the, the timber as well. But there's so much more I don't get because I can't see them. But I can feel, and again, it's a skill you can develop, into what they're saying in a way that I can hear deeper than just the words. This is the advanced level of listening, by the way. But when you practice this, you can actually listen into somebody else's position and where they are, and you feel way more that's going on than what you can actually hear in the words. This is the higher level of listening. This is, this is super listening or something. <laughs> super listening. It's a, it's, a, it's a more powerful way of listening. So if you're interested, I would do some research. I recommend you check this out. First of all, the fact that what communication is limited by because of the bandwidth we take things in, which is basically verbal communication, such a small piece of our communication. But secondly, how you can open up your awareness, your intuition, your ability to listen. So it's not just what you hear, but more powerfully, it's what you feel. Because listening is also a visual skill because you watch how people move. It's also a feeling skill because you can kinesthetically tell where somebody is. And this expansion of your listening will transform your life. I told you before how it will be, if you just change, apply the skill to listen more fully, how you will transform your experience in life, in relationship, in business, in all areas. Add this to that. Learn how to listen visually and auditorial and kinesthetically, which is a skill you can learn. 
it will change everything. It's a game changer completely. So saying you don't listen, I'm being accurate because most people have no clue about this stuff. And I've been learning myself and I'm still getting more skilled at it all the time and I do teach some of this in my work. But in, when I'm counseling my clients and I'm coaching my clients, it's a fundamental skill. And if you're working with people especially, you need to be more able to listen than you've ever been able to listen before. If you want some help in this, let me know. Um, I do recommend that you take support from other people, whether you go through classes, workshops, books, reading, studying, whatever that is. But the better you are as a listener, the more effective you are as a communicator. Because listening is definitely the larger part of the communication. So with that, I thank you for watching. Um, I think I've vented enough on that topic. <laughs> this is my daily broadcast, by the way. And if you're watching this live, this is on Facebook. If you're looking on YouTube, it was a replay. And I'll give you the links where you can find my stuff. Um, yeah, I was thinking if there's anything else. I think I'm complete. So where you can find me. This is Facebook Live at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day on my personal page. Find me here, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replays go onto my business page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby dot author. I am an author. And you can like my page if you would. That'd be kind. Um, also, I put them, my YouTube channel I've launched, which is so my YouTube channel where you find my stuff, which is um, YouTube. It's basically my name, Barry Selby on YouTube. You can subscribe to my channel. And on there, you can find a playlist called Messages of the Masculine, where these all live. And finally, I'm growing a podcast, which I've got several, not a lot, but I've got a bunch of these I'm building out there, of my Facebook Lives that have been in audio format onto my um, podcast, which is called Messages from the Masculine on iTunes. And you can subscribe to that, as well as my YouTube channel, like my page on Facebook, all that stuff. That'd be great. So having said all that, um, I thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, comments about this particular topic, please put them in the comments below and I'll respond when I sign off, whether it's on Facebook or on YouTube. And if you need some assistance in this area, feel free to reach out to me. And uh, I think that's it. I do appreciate you being with me and I hope this has been of value to you. And if it is, take it to heart. It will change your life for the better. So with that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time on Facebook. And uh, take care. Bye.